Do you? We got lots of them dogs who are injured, Daniel. Oh, I'm injured the, just thinking about them. Well, you better tape yourself up. Mm-hmm. You better get that icy hot out. <laughs> yep. Because we got lots of them coming back from injury. We're going to talk about the dogs that we are most excited to see come back, as well as give you some idea of how the game might be played out with mm-hmm. some passing yards for Auburn quarterback over under 100 yards. We'll tell you next Locked on Bulldogs. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. He is Clint. I am Daniel. They are FanDuel, the people bringing you this episode. Um, episode also brought to you by Shaquille O'Neal. Already an Icy Hot reference. Icy Hot. On the, um, it, it's almost game day again. It's Auburn. It's Georgia. It's the Deep South Soldiers rivalry. If you grew up a Georgia fan, this game is special. If you If you went to Georgia... Let me just let's say this. If you went to high school in the state of Georgia and then mm. you went to Georgia, this game means a ton to you because specifically you have a bunch of friends who went to Auburn. They are all the friends that couldn't get into Georgia. Like those are the ones who went to Auburn and everybody who went to high school in the state of Georgia knows a bunch of people that went to Auburn. It's what makes this rivalry so special. Um, uh, and it's weird that it's being played the first weekend of October, but it feels wrong. We're here. We're here and we're playing it and it's going to be great. Jordan Hare Stadium, uh, 330 CBS. It's going to be a great time. Now, what's not going to be a great time, Clint, is if some of these Georgia Bulldogs do not come back and participate. We're getting some game. news. If you're over on the subtext, you're going to get news from us that we're hearing from others on who's dressing out, what practice mm-hmm. looks like. So get over the subtext. We'll let you know as we hear it. But there are a couple of Bulldogs who are dealing with some injuries. And now Kirby's Kirby's hinted a little He's, bit. Kirby's translator out. He Let's sprinkled a little uh, bit in there. He did. But we don't know who's going to play and who's not at this moment. So let's just say this, Clint. Okay. Let's give you, let's give you four. We know that Amarius Mims not going to play. That's a significant not. contributor. He is not going to play next eight weeks. We do believe he's going to play again this season. So That's that right. is good news for the Georgia Bulldogs. But it is not going to be this week. Now, I'm going to give you four names of four Bulldogs that I think have a chance to play this week, but have missed some or all of the season thus far um those names are Mm -hmm. lad mcconkey javon bullard michael williams and kendall milton two offensive players two defensive players four presumed sure thing starters before the season began and so i ask you clint Mm -hmm. georgia down bad at a lot of positions Yes, sir. If you could only have one of those guys suit up, take the field at Jordan Hare, be 100% be able to contribute to the squad, who are you taking and why? This is both knee-jerk and appropriate. Okay, so so (laughs) it's it's, both inappropriate uh and... Fully appropriate. I approve. This is this is fanning out as well as the correct answer. And I'd like to hear if you think I'm wrong. But it's Lad McConkey. Mm. Okay. It's Lad McConkey. Is he the best player on that list? Nope, he's not. Javon Bullard, Michael Williams, probably more talented. Mm-hmm. Is he at a stress position? I know we have Rosemary Jackson come out last week and kind of show why a little bit. I know we got Brock Bowers, but Ladd does something in this offense that no one else on this offense can do. Literally. You're not wrong. He, he's the only one that can get behind the defense like that. And also, so there are two people who can get behind the defense very quickly. 
mm-hmm. and and burn up the field. But then but, what happens? But then he catches the ball. Ah, uh, I see. That's so he's the only one that could do both of those things. Uh, it's Lad McConkey in my book, Daniel. Am I right, wrong, or where do you go? Yeah, it's hard to say you're wrong because you're. I think if you're going to choose Lad, it's because you believe points are going to be at a premium in this game. And of yep. the two offensive options, he's the one that allows Georgia to score the most points. I mean, I think he nets the team more points. You could argue running back is much more of a stressed position. It lacks depth more so than the wide receiver position. I think that argument could be made, but I don't think there's an argument to be made that Lad McConkey is more potential points on the board than Kendall Milton. So if you're taking Lad, which you are, it's because you believe that Georgia is could find themselves in a situation on Saturday where they need, capital N, need to score some points, and you want that guy out there on the field in the fourth quarter if Georgia needs to, if the game is tight and Georgia needs a potential game-winning drive. I am going to go the other way, though. I think mm-hmm. Georgia's going to be able to score some points, and I'm going to say that what I want is to ensure that Auburn doesn't pick up some some just garbage, sloppy points in this game. I want to make sure that on some play action or or some kind of you know trick play, joke play, busted play, maybe Robbie Ashford, you know, slips away from from a, the pass rush from the from Warren Brinson or Nazir Stackhouse, and he slips away and he he finds his he finds his way outside. And instead of tucking his head and running, he looks down the field and he tries to catch one over the top. I'm taking Javon Bullard. If I can only have one of those guys, I want he's number two on the list for me, the general in the back end, the, the captain. He has assumed that Christopher Smith role beautifully. Where is he the more talented safety on the field? No, he is not. But is he the more important safety on the field? I think you could argue he might be. And so an argument. Give me Javon Bullard because if you make this team one dimensional, I know Auburn can hardly throw the ball anyway. We're going to get to that in segments two and three. But if you make this team one dimensional, if you secure the back end, plus you have one of your better open field tacklers in the run game on the field now in Javon Bullard as well. You pair him with Tyke and Malachi. You have got three absolute surefire tacklers on the field coming up to support the run. All the quick stuff to the outside is handled, and nobody's going to go over the top. Let me say this right now. Javon Bullard dresses out and is fully healthy, and you want to give me some juice on a shutout? Under I'll, two and a half Auburn I'll, team total. I'll take I'll take that. You mean yards or points, Daniel? Because Javon Bullard suits out Malachi, Tyke, and Javon. We just fine. We gonna we, be fine. We gonna be fine. Um, those aren't yeah. and then and then clearly it's Michael after that. Um, yeah, and, I think and, it, that's the order. It's some combination of Javon and Lad one and two, Michael three, Kendall four. I hope they all four suit up. On Saturday, be it'd be a I heck of a time. It would be a heck of a time. Be a if great they did. time to get everybody healthy. I'll tell you that much. Heading into the SEC, the the meat of this schedule. We're going to come back after these and talk a little bit more of what we expect to see from Auburn and Georgia. Nitty gritty, right after these. And these are, in fact, FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Mm. Make every moment more. FanDuel is the official sports book of Locked On Bulldogs, Locked On Podcasts, every single where, every single place, everywhere. Get over there right now. All the places we had given you locks yesterday, all the games, all the spreads. Go listen to that and then go over to FanDuel where your boys are making a comeback. Have FanDuel open while you're listening. You're just ticking them off right on there. It's a beautiful Easy. thing. Well done. Well done. Parlay is great. And right now you put $5, you get $100 in bonus bets coming right back to you. As FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more the official sports book of locked on podcasts everywhere. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Bonus bets for first time users. I'm pretty sure I saw if you put five dollars on that Weldon Brothers well done parlay, it's like a it's like a buck fifty. 
your game. Like $150 is what that thing is paying. And so you take that $5 bet from FanDuel, you could really turn it into something. Um, all right, Clint, let's give each other, let's do a little prop betting here. Okay. We like FanDuel. We like to bet. We like to wager. Let's let's do a little prop betting on the Georgia Auburn game. I'm Great gonna idea. I'm gonna give you a a player and a statistic, okay. and you just simply tell me: Do you want over that number, or do you want under that number? And I'm gonna start with um, a man that we know is healthy and that we know is going to suit up and play in this game. And his name is Dejan Edwards, and. Ooh. Um, Ooh. I'm going to give you Dejan Edwards 89 and a half rushing yards in this game. Do you want the over or do you want the under? I want the over mm. heavy. You give me 89 yards. Cash Jones ain't going to be running the rock more than five carries. And Andrew Paul ain't fully healthy back. Rod is not going to be carrying the load. Milton, if he's back, is probably going to get five maybe in that Dejan's going to get the bulk of it. And if I know Kirby smart, mm -hmm. just mark, mark my words. I, I anticipate us being in the twenties come the third quarter. I, I fully anticipate mm -hmm. that. I, I anticipate seven points on the regular each and every quarter, 28 total, mm -hmm. but you best believe come fourth quarter <clears throat> that death March it death March in full swing, mm -hmm. full swing. If there is a death March in Jordan Hare stadium, on oh, Saturday, boy, you will not sub subtext going to be lit because I'll just it, be out here. We're going to be blowing that thing up. Me, just blown up. Just photos of me, just two knuckles in the <laughs> glass, <laughs> smiling. Yeah, the, 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 the death march, uh, I hope, is going to be a very real thing. This you mentioned earlier in the week, this has all the feel of a Kentucky game, a game that, that Kirby Smart is just going to want to get out of there with a comfortable win. If we're ahead in the fourth quarter, you can bet that Dejan Edwards is going to get a lot of touches on the football. So okay. I don't mind here's, that. Here's my – and it's uh, – if you go look at the stats, uh, folks are giving this over on the YouTube comments as well as Twitter, and this is very interesting. The last five Power 5 opponents that Auburn has played, their quarterback has not gone over 100 yards passing. One quarterback. One quarterback. Okay. Okay. The team has had more than 100 The yards team, time. yes. The team has. Does an Auburn quarterback single How can that be? Like, what? Is this real life? Is this a real thing that we're talking about? Daniel. None of their quarterbacks passed for 100 yards against Texas A&M? Uh, Peyton Thorne, 94 yards against Cal. Robbie Ashford, zero yards against Cal. Texas A&M. That's why you almost lost a cow. Peyton Thorne, 44 yards. Holden, what? For, you, 40. Passing? Uh, 6 of 12 for 44. <laughs> I feel like Hugh Freeze when he learned how much better of a coach Kirby Smart is than him. Like, I'm, I'm flabbergasted right now. Oh, hey, by the way. I'm going to answer your question in a second. Please we do. should have addressed this early in the podcast. Maybe you're watching this show or listening to the show and you're thinking to yourself, hang on. I thought Daniel and Clint were going to have a guest on today. I thought, oh, let's thought address old, the elephant in the room. I thought old Zach, the elephant who's not in the room, who's very clearly not here. Old Zach from Locked on Auburn was supposed to uh, join us today. And let me just say unequivocally, we were here. We were ready. We were more than thrilled to talk to our good friend Zach. But Zach did not want any of the smoke from this comment section on the Locked on Bulldogs podcast. He, he, he did not want it at all. And so um, I cannot help but encourage you to just go find Zach Blackerby on the Twitter if you're listening to this podcast and just let him know that it's okay that he was scared of Georgia fans. And it's okay that he did not want to come on here and give a prediction for who he thought was going to win the game. We all know, Zach, who know. you know is going to win the game. And so we're good. 
Will an Auburn quarterback pass for 100 yards? Any I, quarterback. You name the quarterback. I don't care. You can have all three of them, but will one of them have more than 100 yards passing against Georgia on Saturday? I just – I promise you if one doesn't, Auburn won't score more than three points. Like – Auburn's not going to run the ball on Georgia. Uh, the, here's another like list. not for 150 plus yards. Teams are throwing against Georgia 62 percent of the time. Do you know why they're doing that? Because they're 40 points down. That's point one. They're down by a lot. Point mm-hmm. two. They tried running for a quarter and a half. And how? And what had happened was Kirby Smart. Yeah. It didn't work. It's not going to work. If if Auburn cannot throw the ball in this game, and we've been saying it all week, Auburn cannot throw the ball. Their offense is terrible, and you just, Awful. I mean, you just illuminated just how bad it was. I'm going to say yes. I I mean, honestly, the only like yes, I think an Auburn quarterback will pass for a hundred yards in this game. I think just purely based off the fact that Hugh Freeze is going to know that that's the only way that he's going to be able to win this game. And so, yes, you're going to see Auburn throw the ball more, and it's probably going to result in over 100 yards for an Auburn quarterback. Now, it's probably going to result – if Peyton Thorne – drops back and passes it 28 times in this game. Let me just tell you at least four of those. I'm going to love, I'm going to love them. I'm going to love those. Bullard, I, I said this Javon Bullard plays in this game four interceptions because they, they'll be down. They'll be throwing. They are awful at throwing and Malachi Javon and Tyke are going to tee up the reads. Hmm. 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 All right, we'll be back. We got more over-unders for the people right after this. All right, Daniel. Give me your next player prop or team prop or game prop for this game against Auburn on Saturday. Let's go here. Let's go. Let's go Auburn rushing yards. Okay, great. Auburn team rushing yards. Team total rushing. Okay. No, we're not going to go total. We're going to go over under 3.8 yards per carry for the Auburn Tigers in the game. Okay, that's going to be really hard because I think the volume is going to be there. I think here's what I know about – Old cell phone. Mm-hmm. Old, old burner. Cell phone. Old, old burner. Yeah. The old, the old. They're like uh, the old tailor made driver. The burner. Ooh, you, the, you have that like the, the, burner. the, the old tailor made burner from 1993. Um, from here on out. That's what, that's what Hugh Free, that was Hugh Freeze's favorite golf club. It still is. His, still in his, the bag. Still in the bag. Still in the bag. I, I can't yeah. tell you what else is in the bag. No. Because. No, I can't tell you who's carrying the bag. But don't open don't, the bag. Nope. The burner. Um, the burner is going to know that to keep this game even close, he's going to have to be successful running the ball. He, yep. He's going to have to. Now, teams that have done this well against Georgia, if you go back and look, teams that were able to establish some run, not great run, not even dominant run, but just enough that Kirby can't mm-hmm. call blitzes. If if we stop run with the front four, then then you're toast. Sure. But if you can get some sort of a push, I'm talking 75, 85 yards even, just to keep the defense honest, you have a shot. But I don't think the vo- I think the volume is going to be a lot to get there. I think I think the game is going to be we're going to keep it regular. 3.8, I don't believe so. I think it's going to be 3.5 or below. So I would take the under on 3.8 yards per carry. What about you? Would you take that same amount? Yeah, I'd take the under on the yards per carry. I'd take the over on total rushing yards. I'd take I'd take over 100 rushing yards easily for Auburn. It is worth, I mean, it's worth noting these are the best backs 
that Georgia will have faced this season. Um, both quarterbacks can run, and um, the offensive line is is pretty good. And so the team is set up to run the football, and the team has been running the football pretty well um, this, this season. And so it, I think Georgia is going to have its hands full in yes. the run game. Yes. The question is how much is Georgia going to trust tendencies and commit to stopping the run early, and how much is Hugh Freeze going to try to break tendencies and maybe – I mean, we might see Auburn come out throwing in this game. You know, like I, I, you saw I that think from Todd Munkin a lot, did. like in games where the box is stacked coming right out, but he's got a play script that is just like, oh, we're just going to drop back and throw it eight straight times to open the game. You might see that from Auburn. And so who knows? I think early you're going to see Hugh Freeze do everything he can to try to win this football game. Yes. And so – it will it will be very i think you're right i think they're going to come out slinging it around to begin with especially i think they're going to make a couple audibles if glenn and kirby load the box if bull is coming down if tyke's coming down into the box to just say you know what we're going to man up on you and we're going to play one over the top or zero free like so be it yeah uh, beat us ashford beat us sure thorn i dare um, you to throw it down there I dare you to. Then, yeah, I think we're going to see a couple audibles, but I do think old Burner is going to try to try to get it going. Uh, Daniel, I ask you this: we've we've joked about it, but sincerely now, over under over under three turnovers for Georgia's defense plus three in the turnover game. Mm. I mean, plus three turnover game for everybody, not just the defense. Plus three Georgia in the turnover margin. If that is the case, Georgia is covering this 14 and a half easily. This is probably a 28 point game. Yep. If Georgia's plus three in the turnover, Georgia has had some, Georgia has not turned the ball. Like they have had some really bad luck in the turnover department this year. Um, We've given it away and we've not been able to. I know we have some interceptions on the year. We've not been able to recover a lot of fumbles, to force a lot of fumbles. It does feel like there's a little bit of turnover luck coming to Georgia. And it also feels like Peyton Thorne is just the guy that wants to throw us the football a few different times. Just the guy. And you know what? We warmly receive you, Thorne. We warmly receive it. Robbie Ashford, you know, again, you might – are you going to see Hugh Freeze? Again, this is – this is a big game for Auburn. It's early enough in the season where people probably haven't mailed it in yet. They want to win this game. It's at home. What does Hugh Freeze do? If like I think you might see Robbie Ashford come out and throw the ball a lot, right? Like you have Peyton Thorne in for a couple series, you bring in Robbie Ashford, and you know, normally it's run, 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 like when he's in there. But you might see him play action and drop back and throw it down the field. Yep. Well, that's where Malachi Starks lives. And so that there's a reason he ain't throwing it down the field a lot. And I promise you, if if Thorne gets locked in, which he's inaccurate, we know this already. The percentages say against Cal, Cal is not a, a banger of a defense. Okay. Well, they just gave up like 50 points in three quarters to Washington. So. Which, by the way, who has Washington played? Foaming at the mouth for Washington, Daniel? They ain't played nobody, Paul. The, uh, well, this, don't tell Auburn that because they, they almost lost to that team. Um, I I think that if he's not being if he's not able to go through his read, Malachi Starks is going to have a field day. If it's one read, if, it, if it's the hypo offense and an old burner, Hugh Freeze has the same type. It's not the same exact, mm-hmm. but it's the same type. Mm-hmm. Malachi's going to have a field day back there. Yeah. I think I'd still take the under plus three. If Georgia wins the turnover battle, if they're plus one in the turnovers, I think we cover the spread. I think Georgia wins this game minus one, maybe minus two. In the turnover battle, I think Georgia wins this game. 
I think if the game is even, it's right in that 10 to 14 point range. And if Georgia's ahead in the turnover battle, I mean, I, in, I like us 14, 17, 20 points even. I'll tell you what, if we are plus three, it, if it's we're plus three, points, it's a boat race. It's, it's a just, boat race. It's a, it's a kneel on the ball, Gunnar Stockton fourth quarter. Like that's Ooh. what it is. Like that's what one, the about. one time that you got, we are in agreement comment section. The one time I want to see Gunnar Stockton in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Cause we will have already rolled through Brock and all of his, all of his action. And now we'll be on to third string. We'll be back tomorrow. Yep. We've got excited, nervous, don't sleep on all of the last minute feelings that we have for this game. And we will get to them tomorrow in uh, right ahead of Saturday. Join the subtext and we'll see you guys then.